read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance Welcome back, lady listeners. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome. We have got a brand new book called Revved Up from Cameron Hart. We are super excited to have us here. Have us here, have her here with us <laughs> this week. We're glad to be here too, I guess. I mean, if we have to be somewhere, we might as well be here. It's true. <laughs> Somebody was saying something about that the other day, like, you're still doing the podcast? I was like, where, why aren't you listening? Why uh, aren't you uh, listening? I think it was my dad, though. <laughs> <laughs> But I was just like, yeah, we're still doing He's like, don't you run out of stuff to talk about? And I was like, no, never. It's current <laughs> events, really. I was like, talking's my favorite thing. <laughs> I feel like a true. buddy there's, the elf. But there's my new favorite. books. Our kids are doing different things. Our parents are saying stupider things. As they get older. <laughs> Speaking of stupid shit and pets, how about my fucking dog? Okay. Listen, so she, she was out of like, she takes a heartworm and a flea medication that she has to ingest. And so I was out of it and I called the vet and they were like, oh, she's due for her like, you know, yearly checkup, whatever. If you want to bring her in, then we'll give you the prescription just so you can do it all at once. They're like, otherwise we'll have to give you like a month and then you'll have to come back and then you do it. You can get that shit at the pet store. They're scamming you, Leah. It's okay. I don't mind taking her to the vet because I like our vet and they're okay. very good. This is also a good reason that I scheduled this appointment because yesterday, this dumb fucker, she jumped up on the counter and ate an entire loaf of chocolate chip banana bread. The oh. whole fucking thing. And it I know was what like you do. a big ass loaf. I know what you do because my dog once ate a pound of chocolate. <laughs> Did you give her peroxide? You put peroxide down their throat. Yep. Mm, and they just, barf the, everywhere. Yep. I had no idea. Did I remember calling them like, they're like, can you put peroxide down their throat now? I was like, okay. <laughs> well, I called them and they were like, it's fine. It's not enough to hurt her. Okay. <laughs> it's like, okay. Well, some aren't allergic to it, but some mm-hmm. are. I know. Well, and I think it's uh, they have to eat a pretty good amount, especially if it's dark chocolate, I think. Mm-hmm. Like for whatever reason, the more milk that's in it, the less harmful it is. Ours was like a huge pound my grandma brought over out of town, oh, like yeah. on the center of the table, like at mm-hmm. least a pound. Oh, God. Yeah, that's a lot. But anyway, so she did that. But then she felt like really like I thought, OK, well, she's going to feel sick, but she didn't like throw up or anything. But she was just really, really tired. And I had the vet appointment today. I was like, I'll just get them to check her out. And I have noticed in the past year, she has put on a lot of weight. But who among us hasn't? No judgment. And I'm not judging. She's a girl, right? She's a yeah. girl and she's gotten older. She's four. She'll be four in October. So, but, you know, we had her fixed when she was two. So it's been some time. So I was just really surprised. She's gained almost 20 pounds in a year. This is so interesting. You're saying this to me because Rob walks in the room yesterday and our cat, Jelly, has yeah. put on some weight and she does not eat more. She actually doesn't mm-hmm. eat the wet food like the other cats. Mm-hmm. She, I never see her eating the dry food. She's just, I never see her eat, but she's gained weight. And he's like, is there, you think she might have a problem, like a medical problem? Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. I thought maybe it was her thyroid or something because I had taken her in June and she weighed 81 pounds and today she weighed 99 and I was like, she doesn't look that's like she weighs ninety nine pounds. No, I don't think she does either. But she's a, she's always been like a thick dog because her mom and dad were both hundred pound dogs. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I but she was also <laughs> she's always been a little bit leaner. She does not get people food. She does not get treats. We don't give her anything except dog food. That is the only thing my dog gets. Then I and think that probably fine. Yeah. I mean that. So when I talked to the vet today, that's what she said. Like that my whole concern for scheduling this appointment other than the flea and tick was, or the heartworm stuff was because of her weight gain. And so they like tested her blood. And while she's in there, I'm telling her about like what happened with the banana bread. And she's like, oh, she should be fine. Blah, blah, blah. You know, no big deal. And then she goes to examine her and she like touches down her side and blueberry like snaps at her. And she never does this. And, like, just freaks out and then starts whimpering and, like, gets down on the floor. Like, she's sorry. It's like she didn't even mean to do it. They have to put a muzzle on her and, like, Mm -hmm. hold her down. And it was, I felt so bad, but she was scared, you know? Yeah. And then she was, like, she doesn't want me to touch her stomach. So something's wrong. Yeah. She was, like, something's wrong. So they did an x-ray. 
This dumbass ate a rock. A fucking rock. Can you imagine? She is a trash can. Like, she, she's a goat. Like, she will go outside. I, I told her, I said, if you tell me there's a tin can in her stomach, I won't be shocked. Like, that's how much I'm not surprised. Maybe you should give her rock. treats so she's not eating frogs. Oh, God, I know. And I was like, it wouldn't be enough. I could give her an entire bag of dog food and it would not be enough. She's such a greedy asshole. Oh, my God. But the doctor was like, on the plus side, it looks pretty smooth around the edges, and she'll probably be able to pass it. You just need to sift through her poop for the next couple of days. So that's what I get to do. Did they give her something to help it pass it? No. She said, you can give her some pumpkin. <laughs> I was like, what? Pumpkin helps you poop? It, oh, it'll help, uh, like, it's supposed to, like, help their stomach if they're feeling sick or, like, throwing up or anything. Just give them some pumpkin. But like, yeah, six hundred and fifty dollars later, my dog ate a fucking rock, and I have to look through her shit. Yeah, I was like, you bitch. <laughs> what do you want down there? I was like, you big dummy. Uh, so that was my day with my damn dog. Oh my god. But you know, they, they did do like blood work and everything on her because I thought maybe it was like you know her thyroid or something. Because I said her activity hasn't really changed, like she's still just as lazy and her food hasn't changed or anything. And they said, Yeah, maybe it was hormones. They were like, You know, it could just be hormonal that you know she's four and maybe it's just like, her body's. That's adjusted. what I was talking it up to, too. I was like, I think she's yeah. getting older. Yeah, yeah. I wonder that because I don't know. Maybe ours are around the same age too. I can't remember if we got them at the same time. I can't remember. I have to look through my phone pictures. Yeah. But one of my cats is get, now getting in. It's driving me nuts. Getting mm -hmm. into the fireplace. I think there might be birds up there. So I need I need to clean out the <laughs> fireplace because they're bringing. Like, every time I go downstairs, there's fresh paw pens from the fireplace oh, around no. the living room and up the fucking stairs. Like a little bastard. <laughs> of ash. Of ash everywhere. You and that damn fireplace, man. Y'all got a history. I know. Really too. All right. So I wanted to talk about, there's several things I want to discuss. Number one on my list today is the Taco Bell pizza musical. Have you heard about this? No, I was just glad the Taco Bell pizza was back or coming May back. May 19th. It's coming back next Wednesday. I have it on my fucking calendar. May 19th. I'm not fucking around with this shit. I don't okay? even have a way I eat their, that pizza. I don't even understand why they ever got rid of it. It was in 2020. They said they were trying to cut back menu items. And that was the one where it was like the items that they used for the pizza, they didn't use for a lot for of ever. other things. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like that was one that could easily cut, even though it was like the most fucking favorite thing ever, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyways, there is going to be a Taco Bell pizza musical. And the reason I know this is because of two reasons. Dolly Parton is the executive producer of this. And my you. girls, Barlow and Bear, who won the Bridgerton musical, oh Grammy, God. are fucking writing it and singing in it. That's amazing. It's <laughs> insanity. And when they announced it the other day, I was like, this isn't real. And they were like, you're asking yourself, is this real? It is. And I was like, I'm literally thinking that this isn't real. So, yeah. yeah. But fucking Dolly Parton is executive producing this thing. Like, what, what world are we living in where Dolly Parton is doing a Taco Bell musical? It's like all, it's like a Venn diagram of my life. It is. And everything has circled to one. It's Dolly Parton, it's Barlow and Bear, it's Taco Bell. Like if there is, like if they include the Baja Blast in this, like I'm done for. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, it's, it's ridiculous that this is a thing. Like oh, how, how is this a thing? I, I have know. no idea, but I want to, I'm actually curious now to see what they're going to sing about. Yep. They're like, once again, they're showing like the writing process and all of it on their social medias and stuff. And it's just been a joy to watch. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. Who. It's so interesting though, that Dolly Parton's paying attention to them now, you know? Yes, I know. And I'm like, could you imagine them? Could you imagine the last year of their life? No. No, I cannot. Dolly Parton calling up. <laughs> Just like, do you want to get with Taco Bell and ride a musical with me? <laughs> Just being like, yes, Dolly, I do. Oh, God. God well, I go over and like take out Dolly's trash. I don't care what she would ask me to do. I'm like, I, you I'll, come I'll, I'll book a ticket. I'll be mm -hmm. there. 
I'm like, I'll restock your wig glue. I got you, girl. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to mention was Gisadine, Gisadine, um, she messaged us the other day and she did a post on Facebook and and on Instagram. It was really, really sweet. It was so sweet. Um, it was on it May the cry. 4th. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it did me too. I got really emotional. Um, it was just so sweet because she was thanking us. It was a year to the day on May the 4th that we aired the episode where we read her email. And it was one that I just happened to pick out of our spam folder. It was just in there. There's over 500 emails in that in that folder. And I just happened to go in and grab her email and read it. And then Mel read her book. I, ju I just happened for some reason to not, usually when I get off podcasting, I'm back to work. I like mm -hmm. write and stuff afterwards. But that night mm -hmm. I must have not have had anything to do because mm -hmm. I clicked one of her books after we talked about it and I laid down to, and I read it and mm -hmm. then I read another and another and another and another and there I went. You were like, I'm in so deep. <laughs> I think that's what you were texting me super late. You were yeah. like, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm down the rabbit hole. Don't find me. <laughs> so okay. yeah, it was really sweet that she like, you know, she sent us a gift and it was just, it, it was just really sweet, you know, to know that like we had a, a even a small hand in helping her launch her platform and making people look at her books. Like, look here, guys, you're going to love this. Just read it. <laughs> so that was really cool. Um, that was a fun moment. So I just wanted to give a shout out to her and say, hey, and say, you know, thanks again for writing the podcast and asking, you know, how to get your stuff out there. It was a great question to ask. And it gave you an awesome opportunity to be on the podcast, too. So. <laughs> We're so thankful to have you with us. So, and if you haven't checked out her books, what's the first one you would recommend? Would it be the Rise of the Animals series? Um, I mean, if you're into shifters, but she's got a mm -hmm. lot of stuff. Um, she has um, a series that's a quickies, and it's titled something like that. God, mm -hmm. I can't remember their names. I think it, their names is some, a quickie series. Mm -hmm. I'm pull it up real quick. That's okay. I was actually going to say, too, um, the other day I went back and listened to um, a, a Lauren Smith um, book. It was her, um, oh, Gregory, that book. It's a dragon shifter. I know I've talked about it endlessly on the podcast, but I just want to reiterate how fucking good this book is. That I have gone back and listened to the audio multiple times. I'm um, sorry. It was the... No, um she has a taboo series. So those are like shorter and quicker, but God, I like a ton of her series. Everything. Like I'm going through them. It's like the burn for me, the melt for me. Mm -hmm. I just click through and kind of skim through some of them and you'll mm -hmm. like read through and be like, oh, that's the most trope I like. And yeah. Click it. It's like all cracky when you start reading it. And it's the mm -hmm. same kind of hero all the time. Yeah. Just the over the top crazy. Somebody posted up in headquarters the other day that said, I'm usually, I usually line up with the book smell likes. Did you see that post? I don't and then, so. yeah, it was really cute. The girl, the, the lady that posted it in Read Me Romance in the, our Facebook group, she was like, I usually like all of Mel's recommendations. Can I get something similar to that? Like she was, <laughs> she was saying that she likes all your recs. So she wanted something else that you would like. <laughs> oh, okay. I know. I'm going to go really back cool. into the group and look when we're yeah, done. Yeah, you'll have to check it out if you haven't seen it i saw it the other day and i meant to uh, tag you in it because okay. she didn't she didn't like tag your name on it and i was like oh i should tag mel so she sees it and then i completely forgot but um but i just thought it was funny that people kind of know already like what your taste is and they're like i mm -hmm. want what mel wants <laughs> we should have like some sort of post somewhere that has that just where we just keep a running tab of books we're loving we're, just so, yeah. yeah that's not a bad idea people, actually yeah, that we just read and it. just to slide it on the list yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's actually not a really bad idea because mm -hmm. I actually already do the list whenever we do the show notes and this would just oh, be like true. a live running one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to have it, would, it all in be, one spot. Mm -hmm. It'd be fairly easy to do now that you said that. You know, it might be easier for you guys to, because I know some people don't find the show notes easy to get to. Mm -hmm. It might. Be I didn't know where they were for the longest time and I'm on Yeah, you guys can guess. click down and you can actually email the show notes to yourself real quick and a quick little button and I'll send it right to your email. But I could put them on the website easily too. Yeah, just to be like, mm -hmm. Mel's faves or something. Yeah. You know, my problem is, is that I don't always read in romance. I, I almost, I'd say 99% of the time I read romance, but if I'm not, 
I'm reading something that's like mystery or suspense or whatever, which I mean, there's some crossover there, but not a lot. But like right now, I'm listening to it's an old Agatha Christie and it's the Hercule Poirot, the complete short stories. This was one credit. It is 35 hours Jesus. because it's like, I think it's 15 short stories. Hold on. I don't want to click on it. So it starts playing. Oh, wait, shit, it is playing. Fuck me. <laughs> I think it's, oh, God, maybe it's more than that. Maybe it's 30. But it's 30 short stories where the the detective, Hercule Poirot, is like one of the big ones she wrote about. Um, it's every story he's mentioned in. Oh. So I thought that it was really cool that her legacy or whoever put this together, it was one credit. And it was that many hours and that many stories. And I was like, you got me. Because I either read Romance or Reddit. What's that? <laughs> romance or Reddit? Yeah. I saw a Reddit thread the other day where it's like, what's the weirdest thing sexually that's ever happened to you? Did you read that one? Mm -mm. There was one where a girl said that um, she was with a guy for about a year and he asked her to dress up as Where's Waldo and go mm -hmm. around the house and lose, quote, lose pieces of clothing as she went. And she said, but the weird part was at the end that he was aggressively fucking me and saying, I found you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I found you, bitch. <laughs> I would die of laughter. That was happening to me. She said it. She, somebody was like, wait, how many times did you do this? And she was like, well, that wasn't the last time I did it. Let me say that. And she said, but it was really cool. Her answer was something like, she said, look, I'm not going to knock anybody's kink, and that dick was good. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? Good for her. I just said, we have to do doggy style, or I'm going to laugh. I, I, I found you, bitch. <laughs> what? Uh, somebody said, what happened in his childhood that he was so angry with Where's Waldo that he had oh to God. fuck it? <laughs> Oh my god! I don't even remember what we were talking about. Oh, Reddit, yeah. So there was that um, that whole thread though was wild. Some of the shit that people put on there. What I like about Reddit is, you know, you don't just get one side. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You don't get one. You know, sometimes I go on Twitter and I feel like it's like really heavy one way or mm -hmm. this way but with reddit i feel like i get a lot of stuff i get a, a mixed opinions which i want i want to see both sides of what people are saying or what they are thinking which is why i think i favor it more i wonder if it's more of like an algorithm thing on twitter and instagram and stuff where it's like the more things you like the more like those things they'll show you mm -hmm. well, only like on reddit you don't really have control over that you know like you can look up a comment like, what's your weirdest sexual experience? And you're going to get it from all sides, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, you just never know. Well, it's just, I, we were talking about it earlier and I had gone mm -hmm. down a Reddit fucking hole over the weekend where yeah. it was like a deep dive. And I was like, I mean, I think I did this for like four hours. I was like, God. holy fuck. <laughs> just going through and through and reading docs and docs and docs and docs. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, now I feel like I'm getting information from everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Like mm -hmm. I'm getting information from everywhere. I'm getting like doctors, like, cause you want me to tell them what I'm talking about sure, or no? Yeah. We're talking about the, the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, which is very controversial right now. Mm -hmm. And we've both been very 50, 50 on it. Or I was 50, 50 until I did a deep dive. I'm so deep i was actually looking up how um i've never been a victim of abuse mm -hmm. rather violent or mental or any of that kind of thing from a partner so i didn't know how people that have had that happen to them how they respond which wasn't something i thought of when we were yeah. going through this trial they're talking about her reactions and what she's doing what she's saying and but then it dawned on me i was like well how does somebody respond to things that have gone through these things. Do they remember them? Do they remember them in pieces? How does this go? So I started looking up that mm -hmm. and then things started slipping into places. And the further I went down the hole, the more guilty I started to feel. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. And then I remember my husband ends up waking up and I like turned him and I was like, I was so wrong. I feel horrible. <laughs> and he's like, oh, he's, he's like, like oh, no, you're bad. <laughs> 
But yeah, um, I just went down a long hole and then I was like, God damn it. But <laughs> I just feel like you can get a lot of different sides there. Yeah. Yeah. As to where on Facebook, where I was before, I'm just getting clips of little snake mm -hmm. bugs, things peeled from places from sound bits that aren't even clipped together until you read the whole like, because I was reading actually whole transcripts instead yeah. of just like these four lines here. And then they put these four lines here when they said it like that. I'm like, oh, that sounds horrible. She, what? That's disgusting. Until you got it all put down into one. Then I was like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's definitely a mess. Like the whole thing is just a mess. I'm so, scared. It scares me. Why? Well, because, because of I like. Think, uh, I think women are going to get scared to come out. There's no perfect victim. No. There mm -hmm. is no perfect victim. That's you, the reality. You're not going to, you're not going to come at a woman and mentally break her down and her not have lash outs at you that you can speak about. That's going to happen. You're not yeah. going to have, you're going to, you're going to mentally beat her down. And we're talking about a 15 year old man getting with a 24, you're already overpowering her in that mm -hmm. situation. You're 50 years old. You're huge. You're successful, 24, whatever. But it's just, I'm so scared now. You know, Marilyn Manson's going to go sue that other girl now. Yeah. Rose McGowan. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is just going to, you know, women are going to start to scurry back and they just started to scurry forward. Yeah. We just think, pushed forward. I don't know. I think with this one, though, it was like the, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't really know anything Which, about no, the case. Other they're than, friends, know, by the way. Who? Marilyn Manson, Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. I'm not shocked. Johnny Depp's weird. But, like, I don't really like either of them. But I think it, this trial, though, it's about defamation. And I think that's all he has to do. Mm -hmm. is prove her wrong. And I, I actually don't think he cares what the trial end out would be. I think he's already won because whoever's running the media on this yeah. is doing a phenomenal job because they had me. Yeah. They had me. They fucking had me. What I, I think like, with him, though, it's like he just, that's what his biggest worry was working again because he lost the Fantastic Beast franchise and, like, yeah. you know, other roles and stuff. He, he lost think, because of this. So I think that's all he cares about is working again. I think he's already won it just because even the Twitter, like one of the lines, his texts are gross and he can't deny those. He says racial things. He says sexist things. He says bigoted things. I mean, the worst things anybody could say. And I get that he is in a addicted, horrible, terrible place where you probably do say horrible things. I'm not, I give him that. I feel sorry for that. He is in the mix of addiction. But my problem is him saying he didn't do it. I yeah. would be more forgiving if he was like, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. yeah, the things he says, I don't understand how everybody's just forgiving them. But one of the things he was talking about with her, he said something and somebody like slowed it down. And it was like a disgusting line to say to her. And they were like, is that a, uh, a, a is he assaulting her or is that like a turn on? I was like, oh my God. So we're like, Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They were like doing yeah. TikToks with it. And I seen people posting the meme and I was like, this is really gross, guys. If we really all step back, mm -hmm. it's like, come on. Yeah, it's tough because, you know, like you said, the media is who's ever running this campaign is just it's trying phenomenal. to spin it. It's phenomenal. Yeah. It is phenomenal. I got to give them that. It is the best mm -hmm. I've ever seen. I'm like, wow. This is good you know, and even still like, you know, stuff like this that happens, you'll never know the whole story. Even going through a trial and through a court and everything, you'll, you'll never know the whole truth because mm -hmm. all he has to do is discredit her. And then the case is thrown out. You know, that's all he has to do is make a jury doubt her truth. That's it. Yeah. He doesn't have to thing, prove he didn't do anything. He just has to make them doubt her. Yeah. I just didn't know he had a series of events before. The things that they've hidden out very well, I found interesting. Mm -hmm. They haven't made things that I found when I did the deeper dive. I was like, he did that? He did that? Like things that are like documented that he did 20 years ago of violence mm -hmm. through years. I'm like, okay, wow. I did not know any of these things. Mm -hmm. He's paid off mm -hmm. a lot of women. I'll just say that. Yeah, a hundred percent. I would agree with you on that. So very we, famous women. I'm just I'm not at this point in Hollywood, like 
they're all terrible people they, that, you know, they're, they're something and all, they're the worst. So I just feel like at this point with celebrities and stuff, I'm not shocked anymore that like that all these terrible, horrible things happen. I'm not shocked. I'm like, but I do think he's is just filled with when he's in his addictions, when he goes down that slippery slope of terribleness. Yeah. And I couldn't imagine being that rich mm-hmm. and being an addict. Yeah, and having access to everything. Everything. I remember hearing Justin Bieber say something about how he had his bodyguard would check to make sure he was breathing every like 30 minutes when he slept. Oh, that's terrible. That's what his job was to check to make sure he was breathing at night. Well, now he's got his wife Haley and they're all in love, right? They look adorable (laughs) to me. We'll see. (laughs) Tom will tell. All right, let's talk about Revved Up by Cameron Hart before we run too long into this. (laughs) All right. Cameron Hart is a USA Today bestselling author of contemporary romance. She writes books with lots of heat, plenty of sweet, and just enough drama to keep things interesting. Cameron graduated from the Iowa Writers Workshop in 2012 with a degree in creative writing. When she's not working on her next book, Cameron can be found reading, crocheting, doing yoga, and chasing around her grumpy cat. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) The book she's brought us today, like I said before, is called Revved Up, and I'll read you the book bio for that one. Her brother put her up for collateral. Lucky for her, I was the one to collect. It was just another night in the seedy bar working the books and collecting bets. Then one of my slimy clients put his sister up for collateral, shoving her in my direction before backing away. Briar, a curvy little angel with hazel eyes. She's too young, too innocent to be in this dingy place. She doesn't belong in the underworld of gambling. She belongs with me. When the angel passes out in my arms, her fate is sealed. She's mine to take care of now, mine to protect, mine to cherish, mine to avenge. I hope she's ready for me when she wakes up. Mm -hmm. I love that book bio. It is so good. Everything is just, yes, 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 yes. As I go down the list on that, it's perfect. Um, Shaw has a new release this week. It's, or sorry, Cameron Hart has a new release this week. It's called Crossing Enemy Lines. And I do want to mention, now that I mentioned Shaw Hart and Cameron Hart together, they have a pen name that they write paranormal romance under together called Sky Adler. So if you are, if you love Shaw Hart, if you love Cameron Hart, go check out their paranormal romance, um, name Sky Adler and check out their list of books on it. So do that. And then they also have a um, promotion. They, it's called um, Together They Created Grown With Heart. They offer deals for readers and promotions and builders for authors. You can find them on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and on their website, Grown With Heart. And um, enter the giveaway this week. That's the other thing I want to mention. Um, Cameron is giving away um, signed paperbacks of her latest series, to release The Secret Temptations, and she's giving away all three books in that series, plus some author swag to the winner. So make sure you enter this week's giveaway. Let's play in the first installment. (laughs) See you guys on the other side. Bye. Bye. This is Revved Up by Cameron Hart. Read for you by Mackenzie Cartwright. Chapter 1 Malachi The smell of diesel, beer, and dirty money fills the underground bar. I throw back a shot of bourbon, grunting as the alcohol burns my throat and settles in my stomach. Letting out a sigh, I wipe my hand down my face and then look around the shady establishment. Smoke curls up into the dim lights making everything hazy around the edges. Music pumps from the old jukebox on the other side of the room, and drunk college kids are rubbing against each other on the dance floor. I wince at the scene, then drop my eyes back down to the notebook spread out in front of me. The numbers dance across the page, and I rub my eyes, trying to focus. I'm the official bookie for all of Sequoia University's sporting events, Or maybe I should say unofficial. All bets placed are run through the Quintero family. The revered crime family owns this small California town and several others, 
including some across the border in Mexico. I found myself in the unfortunate position of owing them a fuck ton of money about a decade ago, thanks to my father. Instead of putting a bullet in my father's head, Alvarez Quintero accepted my offer to work the books for college teams in exchange for my old man's life. I've been working on cars for as long as I can remember, and I thought I hit the jackpot when I was hired on as a mechanic for the Sequoia University racing team. That, coupled with my knack for numbers and statistics, made me an ideal candidate to replace the former Quintero family bookie. Nine and a half goddamn years of setting bets, collecting debts, and burning the candle at both ends. Nine and a half years of dealing with the scum of the earth, scurrying around this bar and gambling away money they don't have. Money that could feed their kids or pay the rent. But I know all too well gambling addiction is never that simple. I watched my old man piss his money away in search of just one more win. Double or nothing, then we'll be set for life, he used to tell me. Somehow, we always ended up with nothing. The front door swings open, letting in fresh air as well as light from the street lamps outside. A tall man clambers down the stairs leading into the bar, and he's welcomed by a round of cheers. It must be Hendrix Coulter. He won the race today and is likely here to let everyone buy him a drink. He's a good guy, lots of energy and determination, especially on the track. His eyes catch mine over the crowd, and he nods. I tip my chin up, acknowledging his win without having to go up and make a big deal about it. I'm not much for words unless they're absolutely necessary. I force myself to focus on the numbers. After today's big win for Hendrix, I know I'll have some very happy clients and very poor clients. Checking over the list of payouts I have to contact, I groan when I come across Stephen Lane. He won this time, but it's not even close to making up for the debt he owes the family. Stephen somehow keeps finding just enough money to not sick the dogs on him, but my patience is wearing thin. Aye, Hendrix, a voice booms over the loud music. I turn my head, gritting my teeth when I see the man himself. You won me a ton of money today, buddy, he says, clapping Hendrix on the shoulder. Let me buy you a drink. Hendrix nods his head while I scowl. Of course, Stephen would never be late to collect winnings. Paying off old bets is a different story. If he thinks he's going to see a single penny of his winnings from today, he's sorely mistaken a fact I'm about to tell him with my fists if necessary. Yeah, there's a third reason I was given the bookie position. Not only do I have connections with the racing team and a knack for numbers, but I'm a big, burly motherfucker. When I tell people to pay up, they generally decide it's in their best interest to do so. Standing up, I take a deep breath and prepare myself for dealing with this dipshit, Amazing finish, man, really, Stephen slurs as he grins at Hendrix. I step up behind him and roughly grip his shoulder. Hendrix looks at me, then at Stephen, before holding his hands up and backing away. Smart dude. I always knew I liked him. Just the man I'm looking for, I grunt as I turn him around to face me. Malachi, my man, he exclaims. I want to punch that stupid look off his face. You got some coin for me? I laugh humorlessly, then drag the sorry fuck back to my spot in the far corner, shoving him into the booth, then sitting across from him. Your winnings today will cover a third of your debt, I inform him. Stephen sputters, his jovial, naive grin twisting into anger. And since you're here, Let's go ahead and chat about when exactly you'll be paying off the remainder. What? He finally finds his voice, his chest heaving with frustration as his face turns a deep shade of red. I sit calmly, calculating what the new amount he owes is. Stephen goes on a rant, 
shouting every four-letter word he can think of. No one pays us any mind. I let Stephen work out his anger, noting that even though he's loud and livid, he hasn't moved from his seat. Maybe he's smarter than I give him credit for. When he's finally out of breath, I look up. Reality is setting in. I've seen many clients go through the stages of grief when it comes to gambling and owing a debt. Okay, look, he finally says, I don't have the money. Shocking. I don't say anything, I just keep staring him in the eye, waiting for him to tell me what he's going to do about it. But, uh... Stephen looks around the room, probably hoping one of his drinking buddies will bail him out. Oh, okay, I have a solution for the time being. His glassy eyes light up as he grabs his phone, then starts typing out a furious text. Just give me a few minutes. It'll all work out, I promise. No need to get so grumpy, right? He goes for a joke, but I don't move a single muscle in my body, not even to roll my eyes. Stephen spins his phone on the tabletop, checking it every few moments before fiddling with the settings. The sweat beating on his forehead and upper lip shows how nervous he is. She's here, Stephen says, jumping to his feet. Not so fast, I growl standing up and crowding close behind him. Look, she's right there, Stephen whines as he points across the floor. I blink a few times, hoping to clear the vision I just had of a fucking angel standing in this seedy dump. But no, she's still here, all soft and curvy and completely out of place. My jaw pops with how hard I'm clenching my teeth, I'd like to glare at Stephen for tarnishing this goddess by luring her into this bar, but I can't seem to rip my eyes away from the most perfect woman in existence. I drink her in, devouring every inch of her curvy frame. Thick thighs, hips that my fingers long to sink into, and a slight dip in her waist, all leading to round, full breasts that would taste delicious. I just know it. Light brown hair hangs around her shoulders, curling at the end slightly. It makes her look young and innocent, and too damn pure to be in this establishment. Pink lips turn down into a frown, her cute button nose scrunching up as she looks at her surroundings. The angel turns her head, and hazel eyes strike me to my very core. I can't breathe. Can't fucking think when she's looking at me. I've never believed in love, and certainly never love at first sight. But goddamn, I don't know what else it could be. I want to protect her, cradle her close, and make sure she never has to dirty herself with this life ever again. I want to hear her dreams and find out how I can make them come true. I want to suck on her puffy bottom lip then kiss her soundly before licking every inch of her body. What the fuck? Malachi, this is my sister, Briar. Briar, I repeat. I don't care who the fuck she is. Chapter two. Briar. Obsidian eyes lock onto mine, and everything else fades away. I'm no longer standing in a disgusting bar that smells of cheap alcohol and stale cigarettes. Instead, a diesel and spice scent wraps around me, and I know it's coming from the hulking man staring at me. Malachi, this is my sister, Briar, my dumbass brother says. I want to glare at him for dragging me away from my book and fuzzy blanket, but I can't seem to pull my eyes away from the dark, chiseled giant standing a few feet away from me. Malachi, apparently. Briar, he repeats softly. Holy hell, that voice. Gravelly and worn, like he's been through hell and back. Yet, it's still rich and full, rolling over me and prickling my nerves. The way he says my name, almost reverently, as my belly tingling and thighs squeezing together. 
I'm not sure how I feel about my libido kicking in after 22 years of dormancy. Right, Stephen says, bouncing on the balls of his feet. I look over at him, frowning when I see him wringing his hands together in front of him. It's not the first time I've had to collect my brother from a shady bar, and these interactions never end well. When I got his text 20 minutes ago, I almost ignored it. However, my brother practically raised me by himself while my mom chased after men, money, and adventure. As for my dad's whereabouts, well, that's anyone's guess. I try to have extra grace and patience for my brother, since he had to grow up fast and figure out how to take care of a kid while still being one himself. Things have snowballed in recent years, and I'm not sure how much more of this I can take. A hand wraps around my bicep, and I instinctively jerk it away. Stephen tightens his grip and leans closer to whisper in my ear, Just play it cool, B. I have a plan. I'm about to ask him why his plan involves me, but then Stephen shoves me forward rather forcefully. I gasp and trip over my own feet, squeezing my eyes shut and bracing myself to land face first on the sticky floor. Instead, I'm cocooned in warmth, the now familiar spicy, earthy scent permeating every cell and making me lightheaded for a second. I have every intention of stepping away from the tatted up Greek god of a man, but I find myself clinging to him even harder. He tightens his hold on me, and a surge of confusing longing rises up inside of me. It's almost like I miss him, like we've always been together, but we were separated for an eternity. Crazy, I know, and yet there's no denying how safe I feel right here in Malachi's arms as he shields me from every bad thing. As if sensing my thoughts, Malachi combs his fingers through my hair, cupping the back of my neck and tucking my head under his chin. I somehow know he doesn't want me to see whatever filth and crime is happening in the bar, and my heart melts at his thoughtfulness. So, uh, we're good then? I mean, I'm definitely going to get the money for you, man. I don't want to get on your bad side, <laughs> Stephen rambles, laughing nervously. Wait. What the hell is happening? Malachi must be confused as well. What? He rasps out. God, I can feel his gruff timbre deep in my core, rattling something desperate and needy loose. What did you say? Malachi asks again, frustration creeping into his tone. Collateral, Stephen says more clearly. For now, just until I get the money. Sign of good faith, right? I spin around in Malachi's arms, my heart stuck in my throat as I stare at my brother. Malachi grips my hips, pulling me back so I'm pressed up against him. Maybe I should be scared that this hulking beast won't let me out of his embrace, but it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. I have zero reason to trust this man, but I feel safer with him than I've felt with my brother in a long time. Stephen, I say slowly, still trying to wrap my mind around this latest betrayal. You can't be serious. His hazel eyes match mine, though his are hollow and haunted. My brother looks crushed, in body and spirit. My heart twinges for him, remembering how he used to take such good care of me. I want to do the same for him, but this is too far. It's just for a day, maybe two until I get the cash, he whispers. Just a day? Like that makes it better? I'm aware that I'm screeching, but no one seems to notice. I suppose the exchange of females might not be anything upsetting to the patrons of this place. I'll come back for you, B, he promises, already backing away from me. I gape at him, my mouth opening and closing like a confused fish, Get the fuck out of here, Malachi roars, before wrapping an arm around my waist and leading me to a booth in the back. I'm numb as my giant practically drags me across the bar. I can't feel my feet or anything else. 
My head begins to spin as the reality of what just happened sinks in. My brother put me up for collateral to pay off a debt. He left me with who I'm guessing is a bookie, connected to organized crime, no doubt. We stop in front of the booth, and I suck in a breath before tilting my head up to look at Malachi. Dark brown eyes meet mine, his sharp look turning soft. Are you okay, Angel? He murmurs. He lifts his hand to brush some of my hair behind my ear, then cups my face. His touch is so tender, so reverent. Tears spring up in my eyes. What is happening? Who is this man? Why do I feel safe with him? Briar, he whispers, his brow furrowing in concern. Black dots swim in front of my eyes, the edges of my vision turning blurry. My knees buckle and my stomach drops, my entire body going hot and then freezing cold. I've got you, sweet girl, Malachi says softly. The last thing I remember is being cradled against a warm, solid chest. Malachi's warm, spicy scent wrapping around me and carrying me away into total blackness. Chapter three, Malachi. The angel passes out in my arms, and I scoop her up, loving the weight of her against me. Briar curls up in my embrace, burying her nose into the side of my neck. Possessiveness ripples through every cell, every muscle, making me flex as I breathe into my new purpose in life protecting this precious girl. I rearrange Briar just enough to grab my notebook and papers. Then I stride through the bar, glaring at anyone who dares look at the angel I'm carrying. Instead of going out the front door, I make my way to the back staircase, taking the steps two at a time before arriving at my apartment above the bar. Once inside, I carefully lay Briar down on the couch, I'm barely in this shithole of a bachelor pad, but now I wish I would have taken more time to settle in and decorate. I want Briar to feel comfortable here. Glancing down at the sleeping goddess, I watch her chest rise and fall with steady breaths, then do a quick inventory, checking for any scrapes or bruises. She's not hurt, thank God, just overwhelmed. I tear myself away from Briar just long enough to grab my pillow and all of my blankets off my bed. Gently, so damn gently, I lift Briar's head just enough to slide a pillow underneath it. Brushing a few strands of her chocolatey brown hair away from her face, I lean down and press my lips to her forehead. So soft and sweet. Her skin feels like cashmere or some other expensive material, and she smells like flowers after the rain, fresh, floral, and earthy. I'm instantly addicted, but I need to give her space. It would kill me if she woke up and was afraid of me. With that thought in mind, I straighten up and cover Briar with the blankets from my bed, tucking them into her side so she feels nice and secure while she rests. Once I'm satisfied with her comfort level, I cross my arms and look down at the sleeping angel. Her cheeks are slightly flushed, her long, dark lashes fluttering against them every so often. Her full pink lips are slightly parted, and I try not to imagine what they would taste like. Shaking my head, I reluctantly step away, not wanting her to wake up while I'm looming over her with a hungry gaze. I look around the small space, realizing for the first time the only furniture I have is the couch and a rickety table with two wooden chairs. I grab one of the chairs and position it across from Briar, so I can be here if she wakes up and needs me. It's dark out, and when I check my watch, I see it's nearly midnight. I'm sure I have a dozen people looking for me to get a payout and I have at least three times that many I need to chase down and collect from. But that will all have to wait. 
There's no place I'd rather be than sitting in this ancient, uncomfortable chair, keeping watch over my sweet girl. A soft rustling sound pulls me from the uneasy sleep I slipped into. I open my eyes, blinking away the blurry haze and trying to focus. Stretching out my limbs, I groan as every one of my joints pop, along with something in my spine that definitely is cause for concern. Why am I so sore? And then I remember, Briar. My eyes fly open all the way, fully awake and already searching for my angel. Morning, Mr. Malachi, the softest voice I've ever heard says. I grin at Briar, who is sitting up on the couch with all the blankets wrapped around her like a cocoon. She's so adorable it almost hurts to look at her, especially when those big hazel eyes blink back at me. They are more blue than green this morning, and I marvel at her beauty. Just Malachi, Angel, I say with what I hope is a smile. I haven't had a reason to smile in a long fucking time. I didn't think she could get any more precious, but then her cheeks glow bright pink, the blush creeping down her neck. Right, she whispers, a tiny, tentative smile tugging at her lips. How are you feeling? I ask, starting to stand. How are you feeling? She counters. You didn't have to sleep on that chair. It must have been so uncomfortable. Here, join me. Briar pats the couch cushion next to her. You're not afraid of me? Um, should I be? Her brow furrows, those hazel eyes narrowing slightly. She's trying to look tough, and God, it only makes her sweeter. Damn near irresistible. No, I say gruffly as I plop down next to her, never. To my absolute shock, Briar snuggles up against my side. I wrap an arm around her shoulders, pulling her closer. Good, she says with a satisfied nod of her head. You rescued me after all. You're like a real life Prince Charming. This makes me snort out a laugh. I'm no prince, sweetheart and I've never been accused of being charming. Good for you. I look down at her, and she tips her head up, those multicolored eyes so full of trust. For you, I'd be anything and everything you need. Her eyes go wide, her pouty lips forming a little O as she stares at me. Shit, I'm coming on too strong, I mutter, lifting my arm from around her shoulders. No, Briar exclaims. She reaches out for my arm, tugging it back down into place before she cuddles up again. Not too strong, she murmurs, nuzzling into the side of my neck. I was just surprised. I thought I was imagining it. I thought I was going crazy. Imagining what? I whisper, leaning down until our noses are millimeters apart. Briar gives me a soft, slightly embarrassed smile nibbling on her bottom lip. I brush my nose against hers, and she giggles, the sound sinking into my bloodstream and healing every sore muscle, every bad memory, every heartache I've ever had. How is this woman so potent? And what can I do to keep her by my side forever? I just feel, she begins, her eyes locked onto mine, like we've always been together. And also, like I've been waiting my whole life to meet you. It makes no sense. It does to me, I assure her, rubbing my nose up and down hers, loving the soft sigh she gives me. I hate how you came to be in my care, but now that you're here, I don't think I can let you go. I pause briefly, then panic when I realize how that may have sounded to her. I'm not kidnapping you, I tell her. Briar laughs again, kissing my cheek. It's the slightest of contact, but my skin lights up, every nerve ending sizzling and longing for more. I don't mind, she says with a smile. I don't want to be anywhere else. Hazel eyes capture my heart, and when she leans forward, I know what she wants.
Need me to prove our connection, Briar. I murmur into the shell of her ear before trailing my lips down her neck. I'm playing a dangerous game. Every second my lips are on her flesh, I want more, more, more. She nods, and I grunt in approval, though I pull myself away at the last second. Need your words, Angel. Tell me what you want. Briar nods again, and I lift an eyebrow at her. She rolls her eyes, that little sassy spark making my dick impossibly harder. I want, I want everything, she says tentatively. I'm just, um, a little lost here. Lost? Briar sighs, then rubs her lips together as if deciding what to say next. Er, maybe inexperienced is a better word. Okay, I say slowly, not sure what she means. Do I really have to say it? She huffs out. So damn adorable, even when she's glaring at me. I nuzzle into the side of her neck, loving the way she melts into me. When it comes to you, Briar, I'm going to need all the help I can get. I've never had this before with anyone, so I guess we're both inexperienced. This makes Briar laugh. I lift my head from her neck, peering into those hazel eyes. I've never had this with anyone either, but I haven't had anything with anyone, ever. It takes me a second to realize what she's saying. Angel, are you telling me I'll be your first? I choke out. She nods, but that's not good enough for me. Words, I grunt, nearly feral at the thought. Yes, okay, she says rather forcefully. I've never done anything, even kissing. So I guess the joke's on you if you thought I'd be better or more mature or... I curl my fingers around the back of her neck and pull my angel closer, sealing my lips over hers. Fire shoots down my spine when I get my first taste, and I already know I'll never get enough. Briar gasps, opening up for me an invitation. Sliding my tongue between her juicy lips, I groan and let my other hand wander down her throat, her chest, until I'm squeezing her big, round breasts. I find her nipples and brush my thumb over the hard little peaks. I pull Briar onto my lap so she's straddling me, my hands immediately gripping her hips and helping her rock against my aching cock. Malachi, she breathes out tipping her head back to break our kiss. I attach my lips to her exposed neck, sucking my mark on her. I don't give a single fuck about being a caveman around my woman. Soon, I hope to have my baby in her belly and my ring on her finger. Yes, Angel? Mm, more. I grunt, then lift her up, sliding my hands around to her ass and holding her close as I stomp off to the bathroom. When I set Briar down, she looks up at me in confusion. Despite my raging dick and overwhelming lust, I lean down and kiss the tip of her nose. Let me explore you, I tell her, stripping off her shirt, followed by her bra. Bending forward, I lick one nipple, then suck on the other, grinning when my girl whimpers for me. This shower will relax you. Then we can talk about what you want to do next. Do I want to toss Briar down on my bed and rut into her savagely? Fuck yes. But not for her first time. She deserves so much better. I don't have roses and champagne, but I can give my woman something else. An orgasm or five sounds like a good trade-off. I make quick work of my own clothing after helping Briar out of her pants and little white panties. As soon as we step in the shower, I circle Briar's round hips and back her into the shower wall, kissing the breath from her lungs. She wiggles against me, gasping when my cock rubs her hip. All for you, Briar, I rasp, grinding my solid length against her soft skin. I grunt and pin her to the wall, ravishing her mouth before kissing my way down her body. I lick her neck suck on her collarbone, bite her nipples, 
and kiss the soft skin underneath her breasts. I lick down her tummy, kneeling before her, bowing, really, before my queen. I grab her hips and guide one leg over my shoulder, kissing the inside of her thigh. Gonna lick this little pussy right up, I grunt. Brushing my lips up her inner thigh, I grip Briar's hips, pinning her in place as she writhes with anticipation. I've got you, Briar, I murmur right before parting her pussy lips and dragging my tongue over her swollen, sensitive clit. Oh, oh my God, Malachi, she moans. Oh my God is right. Her juicy little cunt is sweet and musky, her pink lips glistening with need. I dip my tongue in her hole and massage the walls of her tight channel. Then I flatten my tongue and drag it up her slit until I get to the bundle of nerves that controls her pleasure. Fuck, Briar, you taste so goddamn good. Love your cum on my lips, Angel. I feel her tense underneath me. She's close. I lick her up and down, landing on her clit. Sucking it in my mouth, she begins to shake in my hands. I bite down softly and Briar erupts in my mouth, gushing her release, trembling, and mumbling my name over and over. I feel like the king of the fucking world, knowing I gave her that pleasure. I lick her through her orgasm until she pushes my head away, too sensitive from all the attention. Sorry, I grunt. You're so damn delicious. I stand up and pull her in my arms, kissing her soundly. Briar pulls away from me, a wicked glint in her multicolored eyes. You look like you have some very dirty thoughts for such a sweet angel, I tease, kissing the side of her neck. Briar nods, then nibbles on her bottom lip. I do. Would you like me to show you? Fuck, yes. Welcome back. Hey, welcome back, welcome back. So I told you all the good stuff before we went into this, but just in case, remember to check out Cameron's brand new release, Crossing Enemy Lines, and also enter this week's giveaway for the signed paperbacks of the series, Secret Temptations. Um, and I think that's it. All right, Join us back here Thursday for the second installment. <laughs> All right, tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. You could take a look in a book, that's fine. Or you could sit back, relax, and unwind and read. 